Greetings, everyone. It's nice to be back with you guys again, and I'm going to uh, begin our devotional tonight by reminiscing a little bit about my athletic career. So for those of you that don't know me, when I was a kid, I dabbled in a lot of different sports. I played basketball, wrestling, uh, soccer, you name it. But uh, once I got to high school, I kind of settled down to just two, and those were football and baseball. And even though you haven't, or some of you may have not been involved in athletics yourself, uh, you know that different activities, different sports require their own uniform. So for football, uh, one of the routines I had is I would show up to the gymnasium at uh, 4 o'clock uh, each night before the football game, and I would start to get dressed. I'd put on my socks, my pants, uh, my pads, shoulder pads, uh, my shirt, my jersey, my cleats, uh, uh, my helmet, my gloves, I put on all these things because they were important, uh, they were vital to the game I was getting ready to play. And likewise, Paul in Ephesians chapter 6, which is the book or the chapter that we're going to be in tonight, is talking about a similar thing. Uh, he's not necessarily talking about a sporting competition, but he's still talking about uh, a battle, a war that's going on, a spiritual warfare. And just like we have an opponent in a sporting game, we have an opponent that we're facing in the spiritual warfare. And before we really start to dig into uh, what we're going to talk about tonight, I, I want to preface this by saying that you should pay close attention. Paul never minces words. Paul is very intentional about what he says, especially because this is the last bit of instruction that Paul is sending towards the church in Ephesus. So this is important stuff. So I, I definitely uh, recommend that you pay attention to this when you are reading uh, Ephesians chapter 6. But we're going to be talking about verses 10 through 17 tonight. So I'm going to start reading in verse 10. It says, finally, be strong in the Lord and his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. All right, so I mentioned to you uh, the, when we were in talking about Ephesians chapter 1 in that session, uh, I mentioned to you that Ephesus was full of religion. They were very... Uh, very spiritual people. They carried, uh, cared a lot about their spirituality. And so these words like uh, spiritual forces of evil and uh, pow powers of the dark world, they meant a lot to these people in Ephesus. And you might be thinking, well, that was a different time. These things don't mean so much to me anymore. But even though Paul wrote these things uh, 1,000 years ago, uh, they're, they're st they still apply to us. There is still an enemy that is trying to seek and destroy us. And the enemy that he's talking about here, it's not human enemies. It's Satan. He's talking about demons and uh, the devil himself uh, that is constantly trying to seek and destroy us and destroy our faith in God. And there's only one way that we can really firmly stand against that. And that's not by anything that we can do. That's by standing in the Lord. It says in verse 10, it says, finally, be strong in the Lord. Uh, it's that you can't, you are weak on your own. You can't win those battles by yourself. You have to be confident and stand in the Lord. Um, otherwise, uh, you're going to fail the fight. There's that the fight that he's talking about. It's a fight that we're constantly fighting. Uh, if you don't believe me, uh, look around you. There's a lot of conflict, a lot of adversity that we're facing. Uh, but hopefully the church can be strong and grow through this because it's not our strength that we're relying on. It's rather our weakness that we're relying on so that we can depend on God. Uh, so we're going to look a, a little bit about how Paul says to prepare ourselves for that, and the, that is the armor of God. Let me start reading in verse 14. It says, Stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith, which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. So let's talk about those different pieces of armor real quick. Let's start with the belt of truth. One of Satan's best tactics for getting us to sway from God is through lies. Uh, you check out the Garden of Eden and the fall of man. Uh, how did he get Adam and Eve uh, to uh, take a bite of the fruit? Uh, he was he lied to them. He was, said things like, did God really say this? And, and that's what Satan does. That's what Satan still does to us. Uh, we live in a time where everyone is trying to find their own truth. And truth 
is important. Truth is the only way that we can beat those lies, but if you're trying to find your own truth, you're going to be unsuccessful uh, because there's only one truth, and that truth is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ says, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So you know that you have to be confident in the one truth that there actually is, and that's how you defeat Satan's lies. All right, let's look at the breastplate of righteousness. And this, I don't know a lot about mid medieval armor, but I would assume that the breastplate is probably one of the most important pieces because it protects all of your internal organs. And likewise, uh, the breastplate of righteousness is one of the most important pieces of God's armor because it protects our heart. Uh, you're, you need to make sure that your heart's in the right place. Everything that you do should point to God. Uh, whether it be your job, uh, the career that you're, or the school, what you're doing in school, the sports that you play, the TV shows that you watch, the music that you listen to, you need to make sure that all of that points to God because otherwise it's really easy, easy for Satan to get a foothold in and push us away when not all of us, uh, not every single part of us is going in the same direction. Uh, the shoes of readiness. So now we're going to talk a little uh, about a little bit of offense. Uh, you should always be prepared to give an answer for your faith. You should always be prepared to share uh, the good news of Jesus Christ. You should be bold. You should be courageous. And I know it's hard at times, but you should take every bit of you to actually go out and spread God's word. Martin Luther has a quote that says, even if Jesus died, uh, it, it wouldn't matter if Jesus died 1,000 times if no one heard it. And that's a, that's a pretty bold statement, but it's the truth. We have to be ready to go out and share the gospel with people. Uh, the shield of faith. And again, Satan is constantly attacking us with temptation, with doubts, with fears, with lies. We, the, Ephesians 6 and verse uh, 16 explains these attacks as flaming arrows of the evil one. Satan's constantly firing this stuff at us. We are constantly under pressure. And the only way that we can stop those attacks is by holding up our shield, our shield of faith. We have to stand firm in God and know that He is who He says He is. We have to be solid in our faith and trust in Him. We talked about in Ephesians chapter 1 how God is working in every situation. We have to trust in that. We have to trust that God is working His perfect will in every scenario, everything that's ever going on. God is working His will, and we have to trust in that and hold solid to our faith. And similarly to the shield of faith is the helmet of salvation. Satan's trying to attack us with doubts. He's trying to make our head, which the helmet protects, he's trying to make our head turn from God. He's trying to make us think about anything except for Christ. And if we are not confident in our in our salvation, there's, those doubts are going to creep in. Those doubts in God, doubts in Jesus, doubts in our own salvation, those doubts are going to creep in if we do not protect our head. Uh, lastly, there's the sword of the Spirit. And the sword of the Spirit uh, it was explained in Ephesians chapter 6 as the Bible. Uh, you guys probably read that. And we, there's two ways that Satan really attacks us through uh, the Bible. He wants to make us either doubt the Bible or he wants to make us neglect the Bible. And most of us don't really have a problem with the first one. Uh, we don't doubt so much as we do neglect it. We don't give the Bible as much attention as it actually deserves. If we believe that God, uh, this Bible is God-breathed, that all these words in here are important and from God, we don't treat them like that. We tend to make them uh, second, play second fiddle to what else is going on in our life. We want to make sure that God uh, remains in the forefront, that God's Word remains in the forefront. And give uh, we should be constantly devouring each and every word in the Scripture because Scripture is the only weapon that we possess that Satan can't defute, uh, refute. He can't go against Scripture. You can uh, check out the story of Jesus resisting temptation in the desert. He uses Scripture to defeat the devil. Uh, so you have to make sure that you know God's Word. So all of those pieces of armor have one thing in common, and that is that they don't depend on you. They depend on God. Uh, like I said, there's no way that we can win this on our own. There's no way that we can win this spiritual warfare by ourselves. We have to realize that we are weak, that we can't win by ourselves, and we have to lean on God. Because the thing is, guys, 
we're going to lose battles here on earth. We're going to go through times of struggles like we are now. We're going to uh, have shortages of toilet paper and we're going to be frustrated and we're going to sin and we're going to struggle with temptation and we're going to have doubts and we're going to have fears and we're going to lose some of these battles on earth. But ultimately, if we realize that that weakness exists and we rely on God, the victory's already been won. Jesus has already won the war for us, and someday we're going to get a go and celebrate that victory in heaven. So I want to finish this series um, by leaving you the same way that Paul left the church in Ephesus. The last uh, two verses in the in the book, I'm going to read uh, in verse 23 and 24, and hopefully it's encouraging to you guys. Peace to the brothers and sisters, and love with faith from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace to all who love our Lord Jesus Christ with undying love. Thank you.